Leon Ford would like to know. In the TV show From the Earth to the Moon, you're shown flying over areas of Hawaii and the U.S. Southwest. Um, is that how you really trained? Did you take photographs out there? And tell us a little, about, a little bit about your geology training. Well, I could write a book about that, Leon. Um, Farouk was my instructor. Uh, we spent over a year in a classroom studying geology, studying geologic formations. Uh, when Dave and Jim uh, did their surface work, uh, we'd go to remote sites. They would uh, get out uh, the lunar rover or walk around and do their geology, and I would overfly them, uh, giving a broad perspective of the area that they were in and sometimes taking pictures. However, the, the movie was a little off because they had me flying in a Cessna, uh, and they had Fruk in the back seat. Uh, that never happened. Uh, I flew a T-38 at the right altitude to give me a uh, uh, similar um, speed over the ground as I would see when I was at the moon uh, to do the observations that had to be done for the local area that we're in. And I don't think we ever flew over Hawaii either. I, I think it was all done in the southwest. Right along with that question, the actor who played you in that miniseries, Michael Rayner, would mm -hmm. like to know how long it took you to identify the specific <coughs> craters on the moon, let alone pronounce the names of them. Uh, I can't comment on pronouncing the names because I just pronounced them the way I saw them uh, and I was probably wrong a lot of the time. Uh, most of the names, as you probably know, on the moon are Russian. Uh, there are a few others, but uh, the Russians had the first uh, lunar orbit uh, robotic missions taking photographs of the moon and so since they were there first they got, a, they, they got to, uh, to name most of the uh, features on the moon. However, um, our training uh, was really long. We, as, I, as I said in a question before, we spent about a year studying geology and geologic features uh, in a classroom, and then we had to apply that to the real world where we were overflying areas that had the same kinds of features. Uh, and that took a long time. It took a couple of years to really get comfortable with all that. Edna Cody would like to know, um, what would you say to someone that said that the moon landing was a hoax? Uh, Edna, I'll give you a, a tagline. Uh, they really don't understand anything uh, if they think we never went to the moon. I know there are a segment, of, there are people out there who think that the whole thing was faked. Too many people saw the movie Capricorn 1 and they took that as the Bible. However, pretty hard to fake uh, hundreds of pounds of rocks that came back from the moon. It's pretty hard to fake 500,000 people working on a program, and not one of them ever said it was a fake. Um, so I, I, I think that's a figment of somebody's imagination. It's sort of like the Flat Earth Society, uh, people that think the Earth is flat, and uh, most of us know that it's not. Albert Rodriguez would like to know, what was the biggest obstacle of your journey to reach for the stars? Furthermore, how did you overcome that challenge? Uh, I don't know that there was an obstacle because I never really considered uh, getting into the space program uh, until I actually applied for it. Um, I, I was determined to be the best pilot I could be. Uh, I think the biggest obstacle uh, to get into the program, once you have all the academic background and you have the flying background, is, um, is health. Uh, that's the one thing that can keep you out of the program, so that's one thing that uh, those of us got in the program were pretty serious about it at the time as uh, keeping good health. Bill Calloway asks, you hold the f record for the furthest non-lunar surface EVA. Did you have time during your EVA to contemplate where you were and look back at the moon and the earth ahead? If so, what were your thoughts, feelings, and impressions on that experience? Uh, I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, I was only out there for about 38 minutes. Um, and the reason it was so quick is because I trained so well for it that I did it very quickly. However, I did go back out a third time and stand on the outside of the service module and look around. And yeah, I could see both the moon and the earth uh, from that particular vantage point. Um, pretty weird when you can stand in one place and see both the earth and the moon at the same time. Uh, I didn't feel isolated as such uh, because I had the spacecraft underneath me, but uh, you're a long ways away from home. What has been your most enjoyable and intense experience being an astronaut and why? Well, of course, the most enjoyable thing was making the flight. Uh, the most tense part.
part of the flight was uh, the moments leading up to the trans-Earth injection uh, maneuver behind the moon where we accelerated out to the velocity that it would take to come back to Earth. Um, so I guess the whole flight was, you know, it was just unbelievably uh, important, interesting, and fun. Pat Patrick Franklin would like to know, where do you see our program heading in the future and where would you personally like it to go? Well, I think the program, the pro program's going to be in a quiet mode for a number of years until they decide how we're going to do things in the future. Uh, there's a move to uh, fund private companies to uh, get astronauts up to the space station. Uh, going further than that is going to require, I believe anyway, a government program that has the capability to build the vehicles uh, that can go to Mars, and that's going to be a long time coming. I, I do not see that happening very quickly. Uh, I think in the meantime we're going to be dependent on the Russians for a short period of time, and then maybe the commercial launch people like SpaceX uh, will be able to put astronauts at the International Space Station, but that's a stopgap measure in my mind. That really doesn't um, that, that really doesn't help us with our long-range, uh, long-time flights to other planets like Mars. Bert Burnett would like to know about weightlessness. Is it the same sensation as falling? Do you feel like you're falling towards the Earth or perhaps some angle relative to the direction of the spacecraft that's moving? Uh, Bert, there's no sense of falling. Um, you are in... Uh, kind of neutral gravity, uh, you're inside a spacecraft, you, let me make this clear, you and the spacecraft are both in free fall. You're always attracted to a gravitational force such as the Earth or the Moon. So you're in, actually in free fall, but how it feels inside the spacecraft is what we'll call zero gravity because you, relative to the spacecraft, can move around, uh, there's no up or down. Uh, but understand that you and the spacecraft and everything else with you uh, is falling. They're, you're in free fall all the time. And there's no sense of direction. Colin would like to know about your new book that's going to be available. When will it be available and what's the title? Uh, the, the book should be available, uh, I believe, in August or September. Uh, and it's called Falling to Earth, and it has to do with my background, of course, and the flight and the aftermath of the flight. Well, Co Colonel Warden, thanks so much for being our first guest on Astro Chat. It was great to have you here today. Thank you very much for having me. Good luck to everybody. Good. Thank you. That's a wrap.